Hello, everyone. My name is Andrew Akwejavini Kun, and I'm your math facilitator for this lesson. Today, we'll be discussing general mathematics, PASI 2020. Before we get on with it, I want you to know very important, some important information. One, anytime you're in the exam hall, please keep track of your time and allocate the time based on the number of questions or each sections respectively. Read the instructions carefully and understand the requirement of each question before you attempt it. Spare some time at the end of the video, you know, at the end of the exams to review your answers and make all the necessary corrections. And then maintain silence whilst in the exam hall. Let's get right on it. Question one, evaluate, correct to two decimal places, 75.0785 minus 36.624 plus 9.83. So these were the possible answers that was given to you. So with this, let's look at the solution. The first one we have our two questions involved. That is 75.0785 minus 34.6240. When we do that subtraction, we are going to get 40.4545. And then we add the next value. We convert it into a four, sorry, excess digits value as with the first one. We add that value and we are going to have 50.2845. And then we proceed. Therefore, our answer 50.2845, it's not the final answer. So we need to convert that to two decimal places. Two decimal places, the first decimal place start after the first point. So the first value after the point, which is two. The next one is eight. Then you make that conversion from the place value you are converting from. So in this case, the second place value. The next one is four. We make the conversion from there. Since four is below five, we add zero. And so our final answer becomes 50.28 which is answer C in question one. Let's look at the next question. Question two, if X equals X is to X, it's less than seven, and Y equals Y is to Y, it's a factor of 24, a subject of the universal set, which is equal to brackets one, two, three, up to 10. Find X intersection Y. So these are the possible solutions. And one of them is a correct answer. Let's look at the solution. So first we write down our universal set of U that is less one to 10. And then we have the value of X. So X is one, it's all negative numbers. And then zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have our value Y, which is one, two, three, four, six, eight, 12, 24, which are the factors of 24. X intersection Y means that the values present in X should have same values present in Y. The only values present in X and Y are almost positive, which is the one, one here. You can see two, we can see two as well here in the X. Three, and then three here, four, and four here, five, no five here, but six and six here. So it means that we can make use of, we can make use of these values as our intersection. Therefore, X intersection Y equals one, two, three, four, six, which is 
the answer for B. Let's look at the next question. The next question says, simplify. 16 over nine, all in brackets, which is a fraction, raise the power of fraction, negative three over two times 16, raise the power of a fraction, negative three over four, all in brackets, all raise the power of a fraction, one over three. And these are our possible answers. Let's look at the solution. With a solution, we first need to look at it based on terms. We saw the first term here. So with the first term, we break down the 16, and that gives us 4 raised to the power 2. Break down the 3, that 9, that gives us 3 raised to the power 2. And then both are raised to the power a fraction of negative 3 over 2, because a fraction negative 3 over 2, which is a power of the 16 over nine affect both the numerator and the denominator. And so we have that affecting it, the second set. And so the two will cancel out the two because the powers will multiply themselves as we can see in the next solution. Multiply and the two cancel out, two cancel out, leaving our next value as four with the power negative three and three with the power negative three. Then we convert that into a fraction. A four is the power of negative three becomes one over four is the raised to the power three divided by one over three raised to the power three. <clears throat> that is equal to one over four raised to the power three times three raised to the power three over one. What is happening here is that because it's division, it was reciprocated. And then when it was replicated, the denominator of the second term went up and the numerator of that same fraction came down. And so now our final answer for the first term, that is the fraction 16 over nine, all in bracket with the power negative three over two. Then we solve that for the second term, which is 16 with the power of the fraction negative three over four. That will result in two with the power four. Now, we could also use 4 is the power 2, but the reason here is that mostly when you want to simplify fractions of this nature, you make sure that the power can cancel out the power of the denominator of the fraction. In this case, we use 2 is the power 4, so that our 4, which is the power of 2, can cancel out the fraction power negative 3 over 4, of which the denominator is also 4. We simplify that, the multiply and cancel out. And then now we have two is the power negative three because we convert that into a fraction and that gives us one out of two raised to the power three. Now that we know the end result of the two terms, we can now bring them together and say that three is the power three over four is the power three times one over two is the power three. But there is a catch here. In the question, all the fractions were raised to the power one over three. And so that one over three affects every term in that bracket. And similarly here as well, it will affect the three raised to the power three, affect the four raised to the power three, and affect the two raised to the power three, or one over, one over two raised to the power three. We do our simple translation and arithmetic and then we are going to have three over four, three cancel out three, three cancel out three in the in the first term. And then in the second one, one over two, two is a power three, three cancel out three. And then we have three over four times one over two. The result is three over eight. Therefore, this term, the value of that, as we can see here. So that is answer C, which answers that question correctly. Then this is question four. Question four, we are find the least value of X of which, find the least value of X, which satisfies, sorry, 
the equation 4x equals 7 mode 9. So we want to understand how this is solved. Be able to understand that we are going to have these as our possible solutions. Let's look at the solutions that we are going to solve. So with that, our solution here as four. So we first construct our modulo table. So with the first one, we have four by one equals four. So using the modulo method. So that gives us four mode nine. Here, four by one in the first one gives you four. Four by two is eight, which is eight mode nine. Four by three is 12. Here, it is three mode nine. And then four by four is 16, which is seven mode nine. So when we simplify that, seven mode nine, therefore our X is four because we need to solve so that we have what number substituting X multiplied by four can give us seven mode nine. And in our presentation, we realize that four by four. So the X here is four, which is the answer for the question. So the possible best solution here is D. Question five, we have some logarithm here that we need to work on. So question says express one plus two log three in the form log na log kill, sorry. These are the possible solutions. Let's look at the solution that works best for one. The first, we have our question. We need to simplify so that our final answer can be represented in log Q, where the Q here will substitute a number. In this sense, it is a variable here, but it should substitute a value or a number. So this is simplified as log 10. One can be written as log 10 plus two log 10, three. Or then we have our second step as log 10 plus log three raised to the power two. In log, when we are converting it into a power log, the two comes to the next value here, and that is three raised to the power two. So in, in the event, let's say here was four, here would have been three is a power four. Then we have log 10, 10 plus log nine or log 10, nine. Here three is a power two is nine. We group, factorize it. Then we have log 10 and then in log or in indices, addition means multiplication. So we have 10 times nine and our final answer therefore is log 10. That sense, A is the correct answer for question five. In question six, if 101 base two plus 12 base Y equals 23, base of five, find the value of Y. These were the possible solution. So let's look at the best solution that works for this. So we convert all the values to base 10. Convert all the values here into base 10. Converting them, we take the first one, we convert that into base 10. So here 101, base two is equal to converting it to base 10. There are three terms, there are three values here. We have one multiplied by two, where the two is a base here. Because there are three terms, the base start counting from zero, one, two. So two is the third term or the third value. So that's one times two is the power two plus 
zero times two is the power one. Then plus one times two is the power zero. I explained earlier the zero is the first value. Simplify that and we have one by two is the power two. Two is the power two is four. Four times one is four. Zero times two is the power one. Two is the power one is two. Two times zero is zero. One by two is the power zero. Any number of variable is the power zero is one. So one times one is one. So four plus zero plus one equals five. And the second one, we have 12y equals one by y raised to the power one plus two by y raised to the power zero. As in the same, same instance in the first step, yeah, we have y raised to the power one, which is y, y times one is y, where the power zero is one, two times one is two. So we have y plus two. In the third step, where we need to simplify the third term, we have 23 base 5. So 2 by 5 is the power 1 plus 3 by 5 is the power 0. That result, 5 raised to the power 1 here times 2 is 10 plus 3 times 5 power 0, 10 plus 3, which is 13. 5 raised to the power of 0 is 1. So 1 times 3 is 10. This 3. 3 plus 10 is 13. Since we have these values as our end result, it means we can substitute it into the question. Or we can substitute it into the question and then solve for the value of y. We substitute that, we are now going to have 5, which is for the 101 bit 2, plus y plus 2, which is for the 12y, plus, equals... 13, which is for the 23 is 5. That implies that we have 5 plus y plus 2 equals 13. This implies we have y. We make y the subject equals 13. And all this comes to the next side, minus 5 minus 2. That's do our simple calculation and our y, therefore our y equals 6 as our answer. And that is C. So C is the correct answer here. Question seven. An amount of 550,000 Naira was realized when a principal X was saved at 2% simple interest for five years. Find the value of X. So A, B, C, and D are the possible solutions. One of them is a correct answer. Let's look at the solution. So first, we need to break down our data. We have the amount, the principal is x, then we have our simple interest, which is represented with r. Simple interest can be converted into decimal, which is 0 0.02, and then we have our time in n, which is five years. We can recall that we have the simple interest formula as A equals P, then one plus R, or in bracket N. One plus R in bracket N. This would imply that when we substitute all this data into the formula here, we are going to get 550,000 equals X, and then one plus 0 0.02. And then the N here represents the number of years, which is five. This gives us the next result as 550,000 equals one plus 0 0.02 gives us 1.02. And then all in bracket five. Then the next method, 550,000 equals 1.02 with the help of our calculator gives us 1.104080x. We divide through by 1.104, and then we have our answer to be 498, 498.151.94559. 98, but that is not the answer. But it doesn't mean the answer is not there. This is the tricky part. 498.151.94559. It's approximately 500,000. Therefore, our principal x 
is 500,000, which is the answer for D. Question eight, given that root three plus root five all over root five equals x plus y root 15, find the value of x plus y. These are our possible solutions. Let's look at the, our right solution. So first we rationalize. The rationalizing, it means that the denominator multiplies the numerator in the denominator itself. So as we can see in the second step, the denominator multiply the numerator and denominator itself. Five, root five multiplying root three plus root five, that's in bracket all over. When two roots of the same value are multiplying, in this instance, root five times root five, the roots cancel out and we maintain one of the value, in this case, five. So root five times root five, as in the numerator, it gives us root 15 because the base are not the same. But in the same instance, again, plus root five times root five gives us five. All over our five, which is the denominator. This is now broken down as root 15 over five plus five over five, because the denominator divides both terms. That is root 15 plus root five. They are individual terms, so the denominator divide them individually. That is put into a fraction. Five becomes the denominator. And our answer or our result is now what? One plus one over five root 15. Now, based on the question, we can compare this end result. That is one plus one over five root 15 to x plus y root 15. Because when you compare the OR with 15, and so we can compare the X and the Y values respectively. In that sense of comparison, it will imply that X will be equal to one and Y will be equal to one over five, as we can see. Hence, when we put or when we substitute that into X plus Y, which is the value we are obtaining for, we are going to have one plus one over five. That will give us a fraction situation where we have five over five plus one over five. Find the LCM, which is five. And then we do our simple mathematics calculation and we have six over five. The end result being one over five. Therefore, X plus Y equals one whole number one over five, which is answer C for question eight. Let's look at question nine. So this is our solution. We have X equals three and Y equals negative one. So when we substitute X equals three and Y equals negative one into, equation here in this sense, we are evaluating two open bracket x square minus y cube. And we simplify that. And we simplify that it implies that two, all in bracket, three is a power two minus, and then in bracket again, minus one, which is negative one, which is substituting for y, raised to the power three. We do our simple mathematic arithmetic, and we have two, all in bracket nine minus minus one. Because negative one times negative one gives you positive one. Times negative one gives you negative one. Negative negative gives us positive and we have two nine plus one. Two into bracket nine plus one. That means our result now is two times 10, which is 20. Therefore, our X is 20, which is the answer for C. The next one deals with a simultaneous issue or problem. So we have the question read as solve three x minus two y equals ten. 
and x plus 3y equals 7 simultaneously. These are the possible solutions. Let's look at our correct solution. So first, the first equation becomes equation 1, the second equation 2. Then we find the value of one of the equation. In this case, we want to find the value of x in equation 2. So x here becomes 7 minus 3y, which of equation 2 was x plus 3y equals 7, as we can see. Substituting x equals 7 minus 3y into equation 1 means that wherever we see x in equation 1 is 7 minus 3y. And that implies that we have 3 all in brackets, 7 minus 3y, close brackets, minus 2y equals 10. Multiply through 3 minus, times 7 is 21. 3 times negative 3y is negative 9. Minus 2y equals 10. That will imply that we have 21 minus 11y equals 10. 21 minus 10 equals 11y means that we are making y the positive value. So the y goes, the negative 11y goes to the positive side. The 10 comes inverse to the other side and it becomes negative. So we have 21 minus 10 equals 11y. We do our simple arithmetic. And we are going to find our value to be 11 equals 11y. Dividing both sides by 11, our y equals 1. Now let's find for x. Since we now know for y, we can decide to use any of the equation to obtain for x. In this case, let's use equation two. So in equation two, we have x plus three y equals seven. We substitute y, the value of y, which is one into that. Then we are now going to get x plus three, all in bracket one equals seven. And we have x plus 3 equals 7. This implies that we have x equals 7 minus 3 because we want to make x subject. So x equals 7 minus 3. x is now 4. Hence, our x and y is 4 and 1 respectively. Now, another method that I can recommend to you is that when you are done, Try substituting the values you've gotten for x and y into any of the equation. If it gives you the result, in this case, we substitute 4 and 1, which is the values of x and y respectively into any of the equation, let's say equation 2, it will give you the result 7. Then it means that you've done the right work. If the result is different, it means you need to cross-check your work and make sure what you've done is the right thing. Probably you've made a mistake with one of the operational signs, maybe a negative sign or a positive sign. Then you make that correction. This will be the end of our first lesson video. I hope that you've all understood and I can't wait to see you in the next video. If you have any questions, please send us a comment. Grateful for your effort and your attention and have a mass fun time. I will meet you in the next video. Thank you.